Hi Grade Eights and welcome to this lesson which is on the last parts of exponents that you have to know. So, so far in exponents we've done four laws and those laws are things that kind of naturally developed because of the way exponents worked. And now we come to something called a definition. Now a definition is different to a law. A law is something that kind of naturally just worked and so it made sense. A definition is something that we as mathematicians had to decide on because we had to make some sort of decision. So let me show you what I mean. And we do, there's actually three definitions in high school. We only do one in grade eight, and then we do one in grade nine, and then one in grade 11. So this first law that we, I mean, sorry, definition that we're doing is something called the power of zero. So when mathematicians were busy working with exponents and they'd made up this language of this number at the top being how many times you multiply a letter or a number by itself, what happens is they got to this problem. What could it possibly mean if you said x to the power of 0, or 2 to the power of 0, or a to the power of 0? What would it mean to have an exponent of 0? Now, if you think about what exponents actually mean, this actually means x multiplied by itself no times. Because remember, that exponent means how many times you multiply the base by itself. So if you had no idea of the exponents except for the original definition, that would mean x multiplied by itself zero times. Now how could you possibly write on the page x multiplied by itself zero times? So mathematicians needed to decide what this meant because currently that's completely meaningless. There's just no ways, I, c I couldn't even write x because if I wrote x, that would be x multiplied by itself once. And so there's just nothing you can write on the page. It's complete garbage. And so they had to decide what this meant. Now, why did they have to decide what this meant? They had to decide what this meant because if I give you a question like x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 4, if you were in the beginning of grade 8 and you hadn't learned any laws yet, you would say that means x multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself over x multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself. And then what hopefully you would learn is what we did when we started exponents of saying, oh, x goes into itself once, x goes into itself once, x goes into itself once, x goes into itself once. So you land up getting 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Now that makes complete sense because we should know that anything divided by itself is always 1. Because if you think 5 divided by 5, 6 divided by 6, a divided by a, anything divided by itself should be 1. So that makes complete sense. Okay, but we spent a lot of time developing a whole bunch of laws which work logically. So if we look at law 2, what does law 2 say? Law 2 says when you divide a power by the same, when you're dividing powers of the same base, and here I have the same base, they're both x's, you subtract exponents. So law 2 says that x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 4 would be when you divide powers of the same base, you subtract exponents, and so you get x to the power of 0. Now logically, I know the answer has to be 1, because anything divided by itself has to be 1. But if I law two, use law 2, then I'm getting two different answers. Now, there's just not, no ways I can get two different answers to the same question. And logically, this answer has to be 1. But if I use this law that always works, I get x to the power of 0, which at the moment is completely meaningless. So mathematicians had a decision to make. They decided that since x to the power of 0 is meaningless if you think about an exponent, they decided that x to the power of 0 had to mean the same thing as 1. Now, if they didn't decide this, then the whole laws of exponents fall down. And they don't want the whole system to fall down. So mathematicians had to decide, this was the decision that they made, that x to the power of 0, so decided, let me write this better, decided that x to the power of 0 must mean 1. Now that's a definition. That's definitely not logical in terms of if you hadn't seen my argument, 
you would be like, why would x to the power of, b of 0 be 1? Why is x multiplied by itself no times equal to 1? That's just silly. But this is the reason why it actually makes sense. You can't start with a question that logically has an answer of 1, but then if you use a law which always works, you get x to the power of 0, and then that's meaningless. And so mathematicians decided that anything to the power of 0 must mean the same thing as 1. Now I would encourage you to hit pause and write this down as a note in your book. Everything I do in these videos, you need to pretend that I'm in class and you're writing these down as exact notes. So write the heading, write all these notes, exactly what I write down, all the type stuff, all the stuff I'm writing. Make sure that that's in your notebook. Now what I've done is I've summarized this in a little box. Definition number one, as I say in grade nine, we'll learn a second definition, anything to the power of zero is one. So x to the power of zero is one, y to the power of zero is one. Now there's only one exception to this, and the only exception is zero to the power of zero is undefined. Now we never actually ask that because it's just so silly, but that would be undefined. Now why would it be undefined? Now it would be undefined because if you had zero to the power of four divided by zero to the power of four, that is the same as 0 to the power of 4 minus 4, which is the same as 0 to the power of 0. So you're tempted to say, oh, but it's 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. But are you allowed to divide by 0? No. So immediately this is rubbish. Anything divided by 0 is undefined. And so immediately you have 0 to the power of 0. That doesn't follow this rule. Now as I say, that we never ask that. So you can pretty much assume that anything to the power of 0 is 1. So once you've written that all down, let's go through a whole bunch of examples which I also expect you to write down in your notebook. So example number 1 says simplify the following. And question A says a to the power of 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Now I'm not saying the exponent is 1. So this isn't a to the power of a 1. I'm not saying the exponent is 1. That's definitely not true. I'm saying the whole thing disappears to 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So let's go on to the next one. 2x in a bracket to the power of 0. Now because it's in the bracket, it means that everything is raised to the power of 0. If there wasn't a bracket, then that's a different story and we're going to do that in a moment. But because there's a bracket, everything is raised to the power of zero. And because everything is raised to the power of zero, that whole thing collapses to one. Now, if we look at the next question, only the x is raised to the power of zero. So the two has nothing to do with the zero. So just be a little bit careful about who these zeros belong to. Only the x is raised to the power of 0. So it's only the x to the power of 0 that becomes 1. The 2 is still there. The 2 doesn't disappear because it's got nothing to do with that exponent. So I actually get 2 times 1, which is 2. So the only tricky thing about this power of 0 is figuring out who the 0 belongs to. So if we try another one, if we try this one, Who's raised to the power of 0? Only the y, because there's no bracket. So the y to the power of 0 is 1. The negative 3 has nothing to do with the exponent, and the x has nothing to do with the exponent. So actually, the negative 3 and the x remain, and the y to the power of 0 is 1. So I actually then get negative 3x times 1, which is negative 3x. So just be very, very careful. If there's a bracket, the whole thing is raised to the power of 0, and then the whole thing can disappear. So, for example, in E, do you see that the whole bracket is raised to the power of 0? So the entire bracket is raised to the power of 0, and so it disappears to 1. In F, only the bracket is raised to the power of 0. The 4 is not, the negative 4 is not in the bracket. And so it is not got to do with the power of 0. So the negative 4 has to stay, and the entire bracket disappears to 1. So I get negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. Right, on to the next one, to g. Here I have 4x, nothing to do with the power of 0. 
I also have times 2x, which has nothing to do with the power of 0. And then your y to the power of 0 is 1. So only what's attached to the 0 disappears to 1. So I actually get 4 times 2 times 1, which is 8. Remember, I multiply my numbers together and then my letters together. x times x is x squared. Okay, so now the questions are going to become a bit more chunky because we're trying to put that that um, exponent of zero law into the other laws. So let's have a look. My first thing I ever do now that I've got this definition is that anything I see to the power of zero, I circle it. And in my first line, I'm going to make that disappear. So this is negative 3x to the power of 4, y to the power of 6, 6 times 1, y to the power of 8. And now, since that has disappeared, I can do my signs, my numbers, and my variables because I'm just simplifying. So what signs do I have in this question? Remember, I'm doing signs first. Negative divided by positive is negative. Then numbers. At the bottom, I have 6 times 1, which is just 6. So now I have 3 over 6. So just be a little bit careful in that 3 over 6, 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 6 twice. Or you can use your calculator, 3 over 6 is a half. Then I have 4x's at the top and nothing to cancel with. And I have 8y's at the bottom and 6y's at the top. So there'll be 2 left over once I'm finished cancelling them. And they'll be left over at the bottom. Remember, that's how we did those type of questions. And there it's done. Signs, numbers, variables. Okay, let's try the next one. So, first thing I see is, gosh, there's a power of 0 and the whole bracket is raised to the power of 0. And there's the power of 0. So first of all, I'm going to ignore everything else, and I'm just going to sort out my power of 0. So that's 1. This is 1. I don't actually need those brackets, I suppose. Times x squared y. Now, now that I've done my power of 0, I now have law 3 and 4 to contend with. Because law 3 and 4 are about the fact that there's lots of terms in the bracket, so every term gets cubed. So it's 2 cubed which is 8. Now when I raise a power to another power, I multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. And then y cubed. Now times 1, do I have to write that 1 anymore? Because when you multiply by 1, everything stays the same. And this is now divided by 1 times x squared y, which is just x squared y. And now I can divide. So remember, what we did in the previous exercises is we sorted out our brackets first, then we simplified the top, simplified the bottom, and then did our division. So 8 divided by, well, there's an, well, there's an invisible 1, but it's just 8 then. 6 x's at the top, 2 at the bottom will leave me with 4 at the top. 3 y's at the top, 1 at the bottom will leave me with 2 at the top. Right, moving on to J. So question J, which is our last one, is an entire bracket squared. But before I even look at that, there's a power of 0. So actually this is going to be 3 times 1 times y to the power of 4 over y to the power of 6. Now there's different options here, so I'm going to do both ways. Some people prefer to simplify inside the bracket first. So some people will prefer to go 3 times 1 is 3, so this is 3. And then if I have 4 y's at the top, and if I have 6 at the bottom, I'll be left with 2 y's at the bottom. And then I'm going to do my squaring. So that's what some people prefer to do. I will do a different method in a moment. Now my last step would be to say, right, everything gets squared. So 3 squared is 9 y squared is 2 times 2, because when I raise a power to another power, multiply and I get y to the power of 4 at the bottom. Now, I actually prefer that way because otherwise I end up squaring so much stuff. Now, there is a second option. So, or what we could do is square everything and then simplify. So, what we could say is we could say, so the top is 3 times 1, which is 3, y to the power of 4 over y to the power of 6. And now we could distribute that square. So, we, we could say, so it's 3 squared, raising a power to another power, raising a power to another power. So 3 squared is 9. When I raise a power to another power, I multiply my exponents, so 4 times 2. I multiply my exponents, so 6 times 2. And then we could do our division. And we could say, right, 9 divided by 1 is 9. 
if I have eight wires at the top and 12 at the bottom, I'll end up with four, now I can't fit them in, but at the bottom. And you get the same answer. So it doesn't matter what way you prefer. Okay, so I'm hoping that you would have hit pause at various stages in this video and that all of these examples A to J and the note is all neatly in your notebook, exactly like we would have done in class. Now, if you go to your workbook or your textbook that we have been using, here's a little summary for you and you'll see the power of zero. It tries to explain here why it is the way it is and so that's exactly what I explained to you and then it's got a couple of examples so that you can have that in your workbook. So let's just fill these examples in in your workbook. Anything to the power of zero is one and because everything was in a bracket the whole thing disappears. Here only the bracket disappears to one so I get two times one which is two. Here only the x to the power of zero disappears to 1, so I get negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. And here, only the x is to the power of 0, and so that's the only thing that disappears to 1, and I have 3y squared z. So hopefully you can fill those in in your workbook. And so that's pretty much the end of our lesson, but what you need to do now for the rest of the lesson is to do exercise 9 from your workbook. There's a to j, and then you can watch the second video which does the answers to those. Make sure that you do them first so that you can see how you're doing. Okay, get going.